June 23rd, 2020. This day may seem insignificant, but it's in fact the birthday of Minecraft version 1.16. To say that this update influenced Minecraft speedrunning would be criminally understating it because Minecraft 1.16 Random Seed Glitchless is the most popular speedrunning category to ever exist in any game. With nearly 3,000 unique verified leaderboard submissions on speedrun.com, it dwarfs almost every other game. Throughout the existence of Minecraft 1.16, not only has Minecraft speedrunning absolutely exploded in popularity, but the competition for the coveted world record has gotten harder and harder. There are many people that endlessly go for the record, but only few have held the title. Before telling you about the progression of the record, it's important for you to understand the grind. The goal in Minecraft Random Seed Glitchless Speedruns is to get Eyes of Ender in order to enter the End Dimension and beat the Ender Dragon. These eyes can be thrown and the direction that they go points to where the nearest stronghold is. A stronghold is a structure that spawns in multiple different locations across every world and contains a room known as the Portal Room. In the Portal Room, there is a circular 12 frame portal that leads to the End Dimension. This is where the Eyes of Ender come in handy again because each of those frames needs one Eye of Ender in order to activate the portal. Each slot has a 10% chance of spawning with an eye already in it, so on average, 11 eyes are needed for activation. These Eyes of Ender are crafted by combining Ender Pearls and Blaze Powder in the crafting menu. Ever since this item was added back in version 1.0, this recipe hasn't changed at all, but what has changed is the method in which these items are obtained. One of the new mobs added in version 1.16 is the Piglin. If a gold ingot is traded to a Piglin, it has a 4.7% chance of trading back 4 to 8 Ender Pearls. Being that you will most likely want at least 12 of them, 2 to 3 Pearl Trades are required in order to proceed with the speedrun. The way to acquire Blaze Rods has stayed the same throughout the updates, and that is through finding another fortress which will always contain two Blaze Spawners, and killing Blazes for a 50% chance at getting a Blaze Rod drop. Lastly, keep in mind that random seed glitchless speedruns are linear. Each run goes from start to finish in slightly different ways and this is due to the randomness of each different Minecraft world. Knowing this information, I will now tell you how speedrunners go about progressing through the game. I should warn you though, the videos that you see on the internet of Minecraft speedruns can be a bit deceptive. They show the person's best run, the very tip of the iceberg, but what it took to get that run was endless seed resetting. Each time you press create world, you are loaded into a randomly generated Minecraft world with a seed assigned to it. The majority of seeds will instantly get reset, but once there is one with access to certain items in the overworld, the runner will build another portal. In general, these required items include a pickaxe, axe, shovel, bucket, flint and steel, food, wood, and some building blocks with other items like beds being optional. In the nether, there needs to be close access to another fortress, gold, and piglins, or else the run gets reset. If there are all of those things, the run might still get reset due to bad RNG from piglin trades, bad blaze rod drops, eye of ender breaks, bad stronghold layouts, and many, many more things. If the run makes it past this point, the eyes of ender are crafted and used to locate the stronghold in order to enter the end and beat the ender dragon. One other thing to keep in mind is that all the runs that will be mentioned are timed with in-game time which takes the total time and subtracts load times and pauses. Anyways, without further ado, let's see how the world record in 1.16 Random Sea Glitchless has progressed. To begin the journey, we have to go all the way back to June 26th, 2020, a mere three days after the update was released. Real Benex, a veteran runner who had held many records in the past, was trying his luck with some speedruns in this new version of Minecraft. What took place for him on this day was the first ever world record in the new category. To start the run, he spawned in a plains biome, spotted a desert temple, and found that its chest contained 3 diamonds, 9 iron, and 7 gold, along with some string and the TNT that lay hidden underneath. Once he crafted some tools, he ran for a bit in the desert until he stumbled upon a desert village which provided him with beds and bread. 
With the essentials, he just needed a lava pool and managed to find one a bit later. After building an obsidian portal with a bucket, he was in the nether at just over 6 minutes. He spawned next to a nether fortress and after locating his blaze spawner, he farmed blazes until he had 7 rods. The next thing he needed was gold to trade with piglins. In this update, a new block was added to the nether called Nether Gold Ore, which has the texture of netherrack, but it's filled with gold nuggets and can drop anywhere between 2 and 6 of them when mined. Benax went on to mine a good amount of this stuff, crafted it into gold ingots, and located piglins to trade with. After a few minutes of trading, he was fortunate enough to get 2 pearl trades, totaling 15 pearls, and 14 minutes and 50 seconds into the run, he traveled through his nether portal back into the overworld. After throwing an Eye of Ender, Benex was off to the stronghold and 5 minutes of following his path later, he threw another eye and it turned around. This signified that he had already passed it so he started running back. A trick that speedrunners use to locate where to dig down is throwing an eye near the stronghold, noting its direction, traveling to the side, and throwing another eye. The place where those eyes meet is where to dig down. This is known as triangulation, and after triangulating the stronghold, Benex dug down into it at around 21 minutes. The next thing he needed was the portal room. Strongholds have multiple rooms, and finding the portal room requires searching through its branches in somewhat arbitrary directions. Fortunately, Benex had chosen the right direction and was able to find the room almost immediately. He was in the end at 2124, and all that was standing in his way was the Ender Dragon. The first thing he did was shoot arrows at the obsidian pillars in order to prevent the dragon from healing. After they were down, he started dealing damage to the dragon, first by whacking it with his sword when it perched at the center fountain, then when it perched again he dealt large blows by exploding beds on top of the bedrock fountain. When a player tries to sleep in the nether or end dimensions, the bed explodes and it deals more damage than TNT. After a final bed explosion, the dragon was dead, and he had beaten the game in 24 minutes and 32 seconds. What a nice run. <laughs> This run seems very slow by today's standards, but this was the first ever world record for the random sea glitchless category in 1.16. It would not be until July 3rd, a week after Benex's run, that we would see what a more optimized speedrun looks like. This would come from another top runner named Nice Twice, and to say that this run was ahead of its time would be an understatement. Much like Benex's overworld, he got wooden tools and made his way to a desert village that had two blacksmith houses. Blacksmiths, unlike regular village houses, can have some very good loot in them. The first one he went to had 4 iron, 3 diamonds, iron armor, and a sword, and the second one contained nothing useful. After trading villagers for some arrows, he was ready to enter the nether and he did so with a bucket and a lava pool. Upon entry to the nether at around 5 minutes, the first thing he saw was a nether fortress. But this was no ordinary part of the fortress. You see, one of the blaze spawners was right there, which saved all that time it usually takes to navigate a fortress. Blazes have a 50% chance to drop blaze rods when killed, but unfortunately the RNG gods were not exactly on his side for this because it took him around 3 minutes to get 6 rods. Hey, remember when I mentioned that piglins have a 4.7% chance of giving a player ender pearls? Well, Nice Twice decided to switch his blaze drop rates with his pearl trade rates, and after trading just 4 gold to a piglin, he got 2 pearl trades. He was in the overworld at 10 minutes and 20 seconds, over 4.5 minutes faster than Benex's pace. The next step was to follow the path of the Eye of Ender to the stronghold, so cue the time lapse. Once his Eye of Ender turned sharply, he chose a spot that seemed right and dug down. He entered the end at 16 minutes and 49 seconds, extremely far ahead of world record pace. For the first dragon perch, he landed some axe blows with him bowing the dragon in between perches. On the second one, he landed a few beds and took it down to around one third of its health. After more bow hits, it perched a third time and Nice Twice finally took it out with one last bed explosion. Let's go, Yoga. Oh my god! His final time was 21 minutes and 8 seconds. Not only was this the 1.16 world record, but 10 days into the existence of the version, there was a new, fastest random seed glitchless time across every version of Minecraft. 
By no means was this run perfect though, because there was still a lot of room for improvement, namely with the end fight. So far, we've seen end fights that take multiple dragon perches, but what if there was a better way? What if a player could kill the dragon on its first perch? Allow me to introduce you to the one cycle. If you place beds on top of the bedrock fountain as the dragon is perching and explode them as its head hitbox is right over the bed, the dragon could go from full health to none in seconds. In Nice Twice and Ben X's runs, they had been partially using this strategy, but to do it in one cycle could save a lot of time. This time save possibility had been known about for a few months prior to the release of version 1.16, but we would not see one in a world record until August 8th. Who got this world record though? Well, none other than the Sizzler, a longtime Minecraft speedrunner who held the world record in pre-1.9 set seed glitchless at the time. Let's see how he claimed the title. After spawning in a plains biome and getting some logs, he spotted a village and as he was running toward it, he noticed that his subtitles were saying that there were molten stone pops. Translated from Sizzler's language pack, this means that he is hearing lava pops. This is a major reason why many speedrunners play with subtitles on, because it significantly helps when searching for lava and various other things. Anyways, with the knowledge of where Lava Pool was, he looted the village, getting tools, food, and iron. Once he made his way back to it, Sizzler discovered that underground desert lava pools can be quite annoying, and after some falling sand destroying his water source along with various other issues, soon enough he had his portal built and entered the nether. The first thing he did in the nether was show an unsuspecting guest who's boss. What is this? Where's the fortress? Where's the bastion? Aside from that, he mined some nether gold ore and located a nether fortress. With some stray piglins, he traded the gold and got enough ender pearls, locating the blaze spawner soon after. At 13 minutes and 12 seconds, he was out of the nether and his journey to the stronghold was no different than Benex and Nice Twice's, with one exception. The stronghold was exposed in the ocean. This meant that he didn't have to throw extra eyes and triangulate it, saving lots of time. After entering the end at 18 minutes, there was one task left for Sizzler, kill the dragon. Unlike the previous records, he brought no arrows to the end, opting to only use beds. On the dragon's first perch, he started doing the one cycle. Nineteen minutes and forty one point five three seconds was his final time. Not only did this mean that there was a new world record, but the twenty minute barrier was broken for the first time ever. Prior to the release of one point sixteen, it was thought to be near impossible to beat a random seed in less than twenty minutes without utilizing glitches. Now that it was proven to be possible, it was only a matter of time before someone else joined the sub twenty club. Well, on August twenty ninth, Polish speedrunner Odiz chose to skip the sub. 20 club and break into the sub 19 club. One slight issue though, the run was not accepted as legitimate but not called fake either. Before we get into that, let's take a look at what he did to beat the game so quickly. Just like all the previous runs, this one included a village near spawn. This particular village had a blacksmith house but in this seed its chest is what speedrunners refer to as a cosmetic blacksmith. Soon after leaving, he stumbled upon a ruined portal that was one obsidian block from completion. In the chest, there were two obsidian blocks, flint and steel, a golden apple, and a gold sword. This was not just any ordinary gold sword though, because it had the looting enchantment on it. When swords have looting, it can save a lot of time killing blazes because it makes blazes drop more rods on average. This ruined portal had a gold block and after Odiz got the iron to mine it, he entered the nether at 5 minutes. Almost immediately, he spotted a fortress and after locating the spawner, his blaze drop rates were 7 for 6 which is unobtainable without looting. Next to the spawner, he spotted a piglin and started trading his gold ingots with it. After about a minute of trading, he had gotten enough ender pearls and was out of the nether at 9 minutes and 45 seconds. Now comes the part where he travels to the stronghold, so let's skip ahead to just over 15 minutes when his eye of ender throw went straight down telling him exactly where to dig down. 30 seconds later, and after about a minute of routing, the ender dragon was in his sights. With a slab on the bedrock fountain and 8 beds to explode, he one cycled the dragon and finished the run in 18 minutes and 59 seconds. So why was this run not accepted as the world record by the Minecraft speedrunning mod team? 
Well, suspicion was immediately raised when it was found that one of his friends had cheated on a run. No worries for Odiz though, because all he needed was the original uncut footage to show that there wasn't anything fishy going on. He was unable to provide this though, leading to the run kinda just being left in limbo. Neither verified due to the reasons stated earlier, nor rejected because nothing suspicious was found in the run itself. Thus, the first ever Sub-19 would be put on hold for the time being. With Sizzler's record standing another day, it was only a matter of time before someone came along and officially beat it. Well, allow me to introduce you to a Russian speedrunner named Dmax. He had been speedrunning the game for several months and had gotten quite good over that time. Upon the release of Minecraft 1.16, he started grinding the category and had consistently stayed near the top. Well, that would all change on September 9th, 2020, when he got a run that would potentially put him on top. The overworld was pretty decent because at 4 minutes and 40 seconds, Dmax entered the nether and spawned in a basalt biome with a fortress visible right next to the portal. After locating one of the spawners, it took 2 minutes of killing blazes for him to have 8 rods, and since his fortress was in a basalt delta, he needed to locate a better biome in order to find nether gold ore and piglins. Fortunately, there was another waste biome right near him, and after 2 minutes of trading, the piglin gave him 14 pearls and he was out of the nether at 11.20. Unfortunately, the journey to the stronghold was far from ideal because he had to traverse a jungle for the majority of it. He caught a bit of a break when he stumbled upon a river flowing through it, but that didn't go on for too long. Once in a new biome, Dmax threw another Eye of Ender and it turned around. After one more throw to know exactly where to dig down, he hit the stronghold at 1711 and it was super linear, so he was able to locate the portal room about 15 seconds later. At 1737, he was in the end. Once the 19 minute mark had passed, Dmax knew that it was going to come down to the wire. No way. After beating the game, his timer showed 19 minutes and 41.61 seconds, a mere 8 milliseconds slower than Sizzler's time. This was just the real time though, and if you remember, both of these runs are timed using in-game time, which takes out the load times. When Dmax's run was retimed, it was actually found that he had finished the game in 19 minutes and 37 seconds, giving him the world record. Up until this point, world record time jumps had been drastic, from Nice Twice shaving over 3 minutes off of Benix's time, to Sizzler being the game a minute and a half faster than Nice Twice. Was this 4 second record improvement a sign that progress was going to start slowing down? Yes, for a single day, because on September 10th, Benix almost made history. He entered the nether at just over 4 minutes and got really lucky in getting 3 ender pearl trades from 8 gold ingots. The fortress was also right next to him, so after locating the spawner, he got pretty lucky and only had to kill blazes for about 1 minute and 40 seconds. He was in the overworld at 9.08 and after about 5.5 minutes of traveling across all sorts of terrain, he found himself in an ocean. This is also where the stronghold decided to generate, so he was able to find an ocean exposed portal room. In Sizzler's run, he only found the entrance to the stronghold, but finding an exposed portal room saved a ton of time. Anyways, he was in the end at 1448, and after almost 3 minutes of waiting, the dragon perched. To pay respect, I won't talk while this clip is playing. I'm so mad. I'm so mad. I'm so bad and mad. And why die even I? Had he landed the one cycle, that run would have been the first sub 19 and sub 18 ever. Even with this very unfortunate choke, the world was still spinning, the clocks were still ticking, and Dmax was still grinding. On September 19th, 9 days after Benix's almost world record, he absolutely shattered his time. Unfortunately, his nether entry was at 550, almost a minute and a half slower than the previous run, but what awaited on the other side of that portal was an instant nether fortress. 
After a little bit of searching, Dmex managed to find the blaze spawner and it took him almost 3 minutes of farming to get all his rods. At the current stage, this run wasn't exactly looking like anything too special, but what's about to come will change everything. Now that he had his rods, he needed to search for piglins and during that search, he came across a ruined portal with two gold blocks. Since this was in a crimson forest biome, which spawns more piglins, he was able to get them to trade with him pretty easily and after trading all of that gold, he got 14 pearls. Something that I purposely didn't mention until now is that the ruined portal was 2 obsidian from completion and its chest had 2 obsidian. The completed ruined portal was also at the coordinates negative 185, 148, which if multiplied by 8, because each block traveled in another equates to 8 in the overworld, would land them at around the coordinates negative 1480, 1184 in the overworld. To understand the significance of this, you have to understand how strongholds generate. In rings, more specifically, three strongholds generate in the first ring, which spans between 1280 and 2816 blocks from the coordinates 0x, 0z. Negative 1480, 1184 is well within that zone, so entering the overworld at that location could potentially put Dmax very close to one of them. Well, after throwing his first eye and traveling forward a bit, he decided to throw a second one. WHAT THE FUCK?! He was in the stronghold at 1515 and only 10 seconds later he had located the portal room. 1535 was his end entry time and a minute and a half later the dragon purged. Seventeen minutes and twenty-six seconds was the final time, and Dmax had officially became the first person to break the nineteen and eighteen minute barriers. At this point, the disparity on the leaderboards was becoming very noticeable. When Dmax's 1726 took place, there were only four verified sub-20 runs, one of them being his previous world record. If you simply look at the leaderboards with no context, you would think that obviously this record is going to stick for a long time. Well, that's not exactly what happened because 10 days later, Corbanos, the world record holder in the versions 1.9 to 1.15 category, decided that he wanted two world records. What ensued from the days of September 29th to October 2nd, 2020 would prove to be one of the most shocking and controversial time periods in Minecraft speedrunning history. But first, what even happened in the run that stirred all this controversy? Without further ado, here is the most insane world record time jump in the history of Random Sea Glitchless version 1.16. Much like every previously mentioned run, a village was used to get resources for the overworld and Corbanos was in the nether at just under 4 minutes. His nether spawn was pretty amazing because he was put on a branch of the nether fortress. After mining some nether gold ore, he located the blaze spawner and it was in a crimson forest biome, which if you remember, spawns more piglins. As a result, he was able to do his trades while killing blazes and once he almost had enough rods, he started to trade the 5 gold ingots in his inventory. Two pearl trades later, he realized the sheer insanity of this run and after killing a few more blazes, he was out of the nether at 7 minutes and 30 seconds. With nearly full ocean travel, he not only got to the stronghold quickly, it was exposed as well. Unfortunately, the portal room wasn't, so he spent a little over a minute routing the stronghold until he found the room. His end entry time was 12 minutes and 51 seconds, and at this point, his heart was probably pounding at hypersonic speeds. If you remember from earlier in the video, the previous fastest end entry time was 1448 by Benex. Corbano's pace was nearly two full minutes faster, but the run was not over yet. As we learned from Benex's almost world record, all bets are off until the dragon is dead. This was a full two and a half minute improvement from the previous world record and the first sub 16 and 15 minute run ever. Now remember when I mentioned that this run was controversial? Let's break down why. To start, Corbano's previous personal best was a full 10 minutes slower than this run was. While this detail doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things, it did make the run seem suspicious right off the bat. 
There would be no word from the mod team regarding this new world record though until October 1st when one of them told him this. The mods just told me I faked it. Oh my god. They would get they said they would give me a rundown after my stream. I think I'm going to end my stream. A short time later, his other world record in version 1.14 was taken down and he was banned from the Minecraft Java Edition leaderboards. So that's it, right? The new world record is 100% fake, a cheater was banned, and the world is a better place, except for the fact that a few hours later Corbanos was unbanned, his 1.14 record reinstated, and his 1.16 record officially verified. So what actually happened? Well, there was an error with Google Drive when he was submitting the run, which was only able to be sorted when Corbanos hopped into a call with the mods. Basically, when he uploaded the files to Google Drive to be shared, Dream, who was from the same time zone as him, found that the world creation time was at 9.31am EST, three hours before the run happened. We know when the run happened because after getting the record, Corbanos went into someone's Twitch chat and started talking about it at around 12.30 EST. After noticing this discrepancy, Dream reported it to the mod team and at that time, it seemed like enough evidence to prove that Corb created the world record by splicing in his best run on the seed. When he hopped into a call with the mod team, he was able to show that on his PC, the world creation time was in fact 12.31pm and this immediately proved his innocence. What was likely the cause of this is that the Google headquarters is located in California so when downloading a file, it automatically switches to PST time. The lesson to be learned from this situation is that just because there is something that doesn't add up, doesn't mean cheating is the only possible answer. Ironically, this was also a reason that the mod team spent so long forming a statement about the dream cheating situation. They didn't want to make the same mistake twice. Anyways, since the run turned out to be legitimate, many people quickly came to the conclusion that this record was going to stick for a very long time. I mean, basically everything in this run except for the stronghold navigation went according to plan. To offer some perspective, at this point, 5 other people aside from Corbanos had sub 20 minute times on the leaderboards, and here he was with a sub 15. Some kind of new strategies would have to be developed in order to improve upon this time. Over the month of October 2020, there was no new world records, but that's not to say that there was nothing going on during that month. You see, ever since the release of version 1.16, there were plenty of strategy developments happening in the background, most notably with Bastions. The new structure added with the version. On July 14th, a player named T Wags released a video titled All Bastion Types in Under 4 Minutes Each, and in that video, he showed where the gold was for each of the bastions and ways to access that gold while getting piglins to trade with. That's all cool and nice, but the biggest game changer in regards to bastions was consistently getting 10 obsidian. If you remember from DMAX's run, he got very lucky in finding a completable rune portal, but with Bastions, in a sense, that super rare occurrence could happen every single run. This video from TWAGS was the first of its kind and brought up the idea that Bastions could be viable in speedruns. A few months later, on each of the first 4 days of November, he would release in-depth guides on how to do each Bastion type in under 2 minutes. Well, on November 3rd, when he released his tutorial on how to do Bridge Bastions, the Minecraft speedrun community would truly see how correct he was all along. Enter Curryway into the scene. Two weeks earlier, on October 20th, he had gotten the world record for version 1.14. In 1.16, he was always near the top of the leaderboards, but never on top. That takes me to November 3rd, because this is the day when everything changed. It all started when he loaded into a world with a nearby village. A blacksmith chest gave him 7 obsidian and 4 iron and after killing the iron golem, he had 8. After exiting the village with food, beds, and tools, he was off to find a lava pool but unfortunately this search took a bit of time, and at 4 minutes and 50 seconds, he was able to enter the nether. Immediately, he spotted a bastion which he quickly identified as a bridge type. Bridge Bastions have 16 gold blocks exposed on a chalice, so that's where he went and after mining all of it with his iron pickaxe, he traded with some nearby piglins. Having entered the nether with 7 obby, he quickly got 3 more trades, enabling him to build a nether portal to exit the nether. A bit later, he had gotten 17 ender pearls, along with some fire resistance, and was ready to search for a fortress. After just one ender pearl throw, he spotted it and quickly made his way to it. 
Since it was in a Soul Sand Valley biome, there was a lot of mob spawns, meaning that he was able to farm blazes quickly and about a minute and a half after killing his first one, he had 6 rods. He built his nether portal on the fortress and at 1050, upon entry back into the overworld, he spawned underneath an ocean, so after locating the surface, he threw an eye of ender and it led him along a coastline. His next eye throw came 40 seconds later and it turned sharply from the first angle, telling him that he was very close. After making his way to a nearby beach, he threw a third one and it went straight down, letting him know that he was standing directly above the stronghold entrance. While digging down, he used a strategy known as 4-4. This involved him locating the 4x4z coordinates inside of the chunk where the eye throw went down, in order to ensure that he would land in the entrance of the stronghold. Once he got the I Spy achievement, he quickly located the portal room and was in the end at 13 minutes, about the same pace as Corbano's run. This was all gonna come down to the dragon perch speed, and at 1406, the dragon snapped, indicating that it was time for Curryway to perform a one cycle. Seven beds later, the dragon was gone, and the final time was 14 minutes and 36 seconds, a brand new world record. At this time, only 11 people had ever gotten sub 20 minute runs and not a single run which had a final time starting with 15 or 16 had been completed. With this extreme time disparity on the leaderboards, it was impossible to know how long this record would last for. January 29th, almost three months after Curryway got the world record, a different speedrunner stepped up to the podium. Right next, the fifth place runner at the time was having particularly good luck with seeds that day. In one run, he entered the nether at 443 and immediately he was able to see a fortress and a housing bastion. At the bastion, he got pearls, obsidian, fire resistance, and string, which can be crafted into wool and further made into beds. His next stop was the fortress, and after getting mediocre rates, he built his exit portal and left the nether at 9.5 minutes. From now on, exiting the nether through a new portal will be referred to as blind traveling. In the overworld, he quickly discovered that the stronghold wasn't too far away, and he was in the end at low 12 minutes, way ahead of world record pace. From here, all he needed was a dragon perch, but unfortunately, the record came and went, and he finished the run at 15 minutes and 9 seconds, moving up to third on the leaderboards. Holding his head high, he decided that stopping there wasn't an option, and just an hour later, he would find out that continuing to play was one of the best decisions of his life. It all started when he entered the nether using a completable rune portal. Upon entry, a nether fortress was visible, but unfortunately, after over a minute of searching, he was unable to find a bastion. That is, until he walked a short pit in the other direction. The bastion, being a treasure type, had two gold blocks on the bridge, and after collecting them, Rainex traveled up the stairs to the area where the rest of the gold was. Over there, anywhere between 0 and 5 gold blocks can spawn, and Rainix got 3. The 2 gold blocks from the bridge, and one other block he found in a chest was all it took for him to get enough of every required item, which is extremely lucky. Just a minute and 20 seconds after entering the bastion, he was off to the fortress, and after going 6 for 8 on blaze rods, he built the blind travel portal and was out of the nether at 10 minutes. The overworld spawn was in a mountain biome, and in Eye of Ender and two pearl throws later, he went to check if the stronghold was anywhere nearby. After throwing another Eye of Ender, the direction completely turned around. 
he had just landed a 100 block blind travel while on world record pace, but Rainex knew better than anyone that the run isn't over until the dragon is dead. At 1255, he entered the end, and after setting up a different one cycle method which utilized obsidian, he curled up to the top of a tower and waited. The pressure was on, because getting screwed over by two dragon perches ahead of world record pace in one hour sounded horrific. As the timer kept climbing, the suspense kept building until the snap indicating the perch. With plenty of beds, it only took him four, the minimum amount, to kill the dragon and claim the world record, 14 minutes and 10 seconds. With high morale in the Minecraft speedrun community, the month of January came to a close and it was anyone's guess what February would have to offer. Oh, little did anybody know. But let's take a small detour because on February 6th, the best speedrunning seed up to that point was rolled by a player named GavinG72. Unfortunately, he got insanely unlucky during the run, only getting 4 ender pearls from the bastion and having to go back to it after the fortress. He however, still finished the run in 1513, which might give you an idea as to just how insane of a seed this is. The nether entry was with a ruined portal in under 2 minutes and immediately there was a bridge bastion. On top of that, another fortress was very close by and if you blind traveled from the fortress, well, you might either be over an ocean very close to an exposed portal room or just straight into the stronghold. The fact that a seed this good was even pulled brought an idea into the community. Maybe sub 10 minutes is possible. It would undoubtedly be an absolutely insane feat, but with the right amount of luck, someone might just be able to pull it off. Anyways, the first action we would see in the new month was on February 14th when Xylanox might have gotten the world record. In fact, it was so close and so impossible to tell if it was faster than Rainex's run that it was ruled a tie. Let's take a closer look. At 4 minutes and 30 seconds, he entered the nether and located a housing bastion pretty quickly, arguably the best type because of its consistency. He got 12 obby from a chest and was able to get pearls, fire resistance, and string before leaving to find a fortress. Soon he found one and was lucky enough to find the spawner with relative ease. Six rods later, he was exiting the nether at 9 minutes and 45 seconds. Unfortunately, after throwing his first eye, he made a grave mistake. Did you catch it? He paused to do mental math. This may seem insignificant, but remember this small detail. After throwing his first eye, he went about 40 blocks to the side to throw another one. This is done in order to calculate how far away the stronghold is and minimize the amount of eyes thrown because they have a 1 in 5 chance of breaking. The angles between the eye throws changed 20 degrees, telling him that his blind travel distance was absolutely amazing. Less than 200 blocks. At around 12.15, he was in the end and the perch was going to be the deciding factor. A minute and 40 seconds later, the dragon snapped and he performed a very clean 4 bed 1 cycle, finishing the run with an in-game time of 14 minutes and 5 seconds. While this in-game time is faster than Rainex's, the runs were too close to call just yet so there was a retime for both of them. The old world record was retimed to 14 minutes and 7 seconds, but remember when Xylanox paused to do math? Well, it was heavily disagreed upon whether this 5 second pause should be counted toward the final time, but the circumstances made it a whole lot more complicated. You see, with Rainex having a 1407 after retime, adding the 5 second pause would give him the world record, but taking it out would give it to Xylanox. Eventually, the two runners in the mod team agreed upon a tie, and both runs were 1407 on the leaderboards, sharing the podium. Being that this video is about speedrunning, it's only right if I speedrun it telling you about the most important discovery for this category, which came right after Xylanox had his run. On the official leaderboards, there are different columns that tell extra information about a run. Most of these seem practical to have, but one sticks out and might not be as obvious at first glance. F3. You see, most runners use F3 for a multitude of reasons, such as knowing where you are, knowing where to blind travel, knowing which quadrant you're in, knowing if the nether has a bastion, knowing where in a chunk to dig down for the stronghold, and turning 
putting on hitboxes for the Dragon 1 cycle. Hold on a second, let's slow down a bit, because I just introduced you to a ton of new stuff. First of all, there are 4 quadrants in the nether, just like an ordinary graph. The significance of this is that only one structure can spawn in each quadrant, so if you have a bastion in positive positive, you know for a fact that there won't be anything else over there. As for the stuff about knowing if and where there's a bastion, on February 15th, one day after Xylanox's run, Strategy Innovator and Top Speed Runner K4 released a video titled Practical Guide to Bastion X-Ray Slash Microlensing. In it, he showed that there was an incredible piece of information readily available from the F3 menu. Essentially, the E number on the right represents how many entities are loaded in, whereas the one on the left just represents how many are in a runner's field of view. A bit lower down, the M number represents the hostile mobs to spawn in, and C represents non-hostile creatures, like striders. The thing about Bastion, is that piglins spawn with them, so they aren't counted in the M number, but they're still entities. Bastion piglins are also permanently loaded upon nether entry and never despawn, which is what makes this possible. Anyways, if you add the M and the C numbers and subtract that from the total number of entities, the difference is just the piglins that spawn with a bastion. If there's a bastion, the E number should be about 20 higher than the M plus C, and if there's no bastion, the numbers should be about the same. This is only in loaded chunks also, so let's say you turn your render distance to 16 and there is a bastion. If you turn it down to 12 and the bastion disappears, you know for a fact that the bastion is somewhere 12 to 16 chunks away. Now, locating the exact angle of the bastion. If a player's FOV is turned down to the lowest possible, 30, looking around and watching the E number for a field of view spike is a sign of a bastion. Usually, the spikes will be drastic enough to avoid false positives. Anyways, where were we? Oh yeah, tied world record, Rainex and Xylanox. Well, unfortunately for these two, the GOAT of Minecraft speedrunning, Illumina, decided that it was his time to make his mark. Illumina is a runner who doesn't use F3, so maybe it makes a bit more sense as to why I brought up the uses of F3 just now. Anyways, what exactly did Illumina do? Well, on February 22nd, he loaded into a pretty good seed. Village spawn, blacksmith chest, blah blah blah, he entered the nether at 3 minutes. The first thing he saw was a basalt biome, commonly referred to as a brussalt because it's hard to move fast and bastions can't spawn there. After a bit of running, he made it out, spotted a fortress, and upon entry into the fortress, he spotted a bastion. Without a shield or fire resistance, he killed blazes and went 6 for 7 on drops. Next, the bastion, which was a treasure type. Unfortunately, there was a large lava flow running right over the normal path, and it nearly blocked off the stairs. But with some good maneuvering, he made it up to the top where the gold was. By performing a route pioneered by fellow speedrunner Ninja Brain, he was able to get piglins into a hole where he threw gold to trade with them. After he got all the necessary items, he threw down the portal right in the bastion and was out of the nether at 8.30. The blind travel distance, though, was terrible. Fortunately, he had pearls for days, so maneuvering through the mountain terrain wasn't too difficult and eventually he hit an ocean. With a full ocean travel for the rest of the journey, he spotted an ocean exposed portal room and was in the end 4 full minutes after he had left the nether. Now, it was time for the perch to decide the fate of the run, and as Illumina prayed to Big Tony aka the speedrun god, the snap indicating the perch. With 5 beds and no F3, he did a 1 cycle and finished the run with a time of 13 minutes and 53 seconds, becoming the first person to ever break the 14 minute barrier almost 6 months after Corbanos broke the 15 minute one. The community rejoiced, Carl Jobs made a video about it, and world peace was restored. There was absolutely nobody getting in Illumina's way of holding the crown, and the next day the world record was broken. Cue the South Park meme. And it's gone. Uh, what? It's gone. It's all gone. So, who broke the record? Well, none other than a player with 13 letters in his name, 2 letter name. With 4 sub 16s to his name at the time, he was just itching for that sub 15, but little did he know, he would completely skip that minute barrier and continue a phenomenon known as the Illumina Curse. Shameless plug, but I already made a video breaking this down in great detail, so go check it out after this. Anyways, let's take a look at this speedrun. Up until this point, none of the records had used ocean strats, but their viability was starting to show. 
He spawned on an island and quickly made his way to a shipwreck where he got 9 iron ingots. Using a map he found in the shipwreck, he made his way to a buried treasure which gave him iron, gold, and food. An underwater ruined portal gave him more gold and 2 golden apples and by using a magma ravine, he was able to build a nether portal and enter the nether at 3 minutes and 40 seconds. His spawn was quite possibly the best possible one because he was in the bottom of a housing bastion. All he needed to do was break the center chest to aggro piglins and lead them to a hole near the gold blocks, which is a route known as Manhunt, pioneered by Fyro. At 540, he had everything and was out in search of a fortress, and a short time later, he got one. After obtaining his rods, he was out of the nether at low 9 minutes, and 2.5 minutes later, he located the stronghold. The end portal had 4 eyes of ender already there, and at about the same pace as Illumina, he entered the end. Yet again, it was all gonna come down to the purge. Soon, it happened and with 5 beds and a few exits, the dragon was dead and his final time was 13 minutes and 52 seconds. So after months of world records not being beaten, in 2 days there are 2 new records. Sounds about right. 2 letter name, knowing that his record was well within striking distance, didn't feel comfortable beating Illumina by just one second, so he kept up the grind, and the very next day, I think you know where this is going. You can't write a better script than this, so yet again, let's break down the run. This run, similar to his last world record, utilized ocean strats and two letter name was able to enter the nether at 3 minutes and 20 seconds. Immediately, he saw a treasure bastion, then turned around and saw a fortress. Using the same route as Illumina did, he got piglins to trade and these piglins absolutely hated fire. In fact, they hated it so much that they traded him 7 fire resistance potions before even giving him enough pearls to leave. At the fortress, he went 6 for 8 on rods and was out of the nether at low 9 minutes, very similar to his last run. After he threw his first eye, he took note of the angle, pearled a bit forward into the side, and threw another eye to gauge how far away the stronghold was. Well, the angle changed by 30 degrees, telling him that he absolutely nailed the blind travel. At 11.18, he was in the end, and yet again it was going to come down to the end fight, but he had a bit more leeway this time. What he wasn't expecting was one of the fastest dragon purges ever. Now beg two questions. How long was this record going to stand and how low could the world record go? To answer the first one, the pace throughout the entire run was amazing but not unbeatable. The day before, Rainex entered the end at 11 minutes and 10 seconds but got a bad purge. On top of that, people had left the nether on faster pace but got bad blind travel distances each time. Contrary to what the leaderboards looked like, it seemed like only a matter of time before the record was going to be beaten. This simple fact is why February of 2021 started the golden age for Minecraft speedrunning. The sheer unpredictability produced some absolutely insane moments. For the second question, a sub 10 possibility was in the picture, but deemed too improbable to happen anytime soon. After this amazing time improvement, people started to pick up the gas, but after a couple weeks, the closest anyone had gotten was Ninja Brain with a 1341. It was truly gonna take an incredible run, to say the least. Enter FV666 into the scene, a relatively unknown but top level Hungarian runner who had a 1438 PB. On March 6th, he pulled one of the most insane and bizarre Minecraft seeds ever and used it to make a name for himself. Let's take a closer look. The world spawn was right next to a spruce village, so far nothing out of the ordinary. The first house he went to was a blacksmith and in his chest lay 3 iron pickaxes and 4 diamonds. Personally, I prefer carrying around 4 iron pickaxes just in case, but 3 is definitely playable. The next house he went to contained a chest with 6 logs which Effie used to make a diamond axe and shovel. Right next to the house was a ruined portal and its chest contained 27 iron nuggets, 5 obsidian, and a fire charge along with having a gold block 
block on top. Not only was this enough to complete and light the ruined portal, but also craft a bucket and gold helmet. At 1.10, he entered the nether with everything he needed except for food. Overworlds do not get a whole lot better than that. Anyways, he located a bridge bastion and after mining the gold, he went over to a triple chest part, had piglins trade there, and at only 4 minutes and 20 seconds, he was in search of a fortress. For comparison, Curryway's former world record, which also utilized a bridge bastion, didn't have him entering the nether until 4.50. He located the fortress a short time later, but unfortunately, the blaze spawner was pretty hard to find. Not to worry though, because his blaze rod drop rates were 100%. It was looking like he was going to be leaving the nether in under 8 minutes, but Effie had made a serious mistake. You see, he had no way of lighting the portal because he accidentally threw out his fire charges from the bastion. Fortunately, he did have some gravel, so after getting a piece of flint, he crafted flint and steel and left the nether at 8 minutes and 10 seconds, 25 seconds later than what it would have been if this mistake had been avoided. In the overworld, he threw two eyes to gauge how far away the stronghold was, and the angle change between the two throws was 15 degrees. A little over a minute after going through that blind travel portal, he was digging down for the stronghold and at just over 10 minutes, a minute faster than two letter names run, he was in the end. End. As soon as the perch started, he purled to the center fountain and pulled off a one cycle in 5 beds, securing the world record and the first ever sub 12, with a final time of 11 minutes and 50 seconds. Regardless of the mistakes, this run was absolutely absurd and just further helped to show the potential of the category. The only problem is that due to the amount of time the record had been dropping, so many people were grinding the category. Inevitably, more people would start getting on world record pace and everyone knew that it was just a matter of time before the record was going to be broken again. Well, that matter of time was 4 days because on March 20th, making his second appearance in this video, the Sizzler got the run of his life. With a lava pool in the form of a rune portal, he entered the nether. The spawn wasn't anything crazy with him being placed in a basalt delta, but the terrain was very easy to traverse. After a bit of running, he saw another fortress in the distance, but that's not all. The part of the fortress that was poking out was the blaze spawner, and upon closer inspection, he discovered a treasure bastion right next to it. Playing the fortress first, he got pretty good rates and was off to the bastion before 6 minutes. At the bastion, he got very solid trades and was out of the nether at 8 minutes and 20 seconds. What was awaiting him in the overworld was both the most unfortunate and fortunate things possible. Right after going through the portal, he got mining fatigue from a monument right below him. Fortunately, this wasn't a run killer because by death resetting, he could make it go away. After throwing an eye to see which island he would be doing that at, he discovered the stronghold right there. At the island, he quickly found that burning to death wasn't an option because he had fire resistance, so instead he used the last of his ender pearls. Once that was sorted, he looked around for a bit, found an ocean exposed portal room, and entered the end in under 10 minutes, becoming the first person to ever achieve that. Not too long after, the dragon perched, and after a clean one cycle, 11 minutes and 7 seconds was the final time. Now, it may not be easy to take in all this information, so I'm going to give a quick recap of the previous month. 28 days prior to Sizzler's run, Illumina got the first ever sub-14. This was merely the first domino in the line, because right after that, Two Letter Name broke the record twice in two days, breaking the 13 minute barrier. A few weeks later, Fe666 got the first ever sub-12, and now Sizzler nearly got the first ever sub-11. Everything was happening so fast, considering the fact that it was almost half a year between the first sub-15 and sub-14. As times get lower, records get exponentially harder to beat, and at this pace, it was only a matter of time before players would hit a wall. That being said, Sizzler's record wouldn't be that wall, because three weeks later, on April 13th, a completely unknown speedrunner named Minsky might have claimed the title. But first, who is Minsky? Well, his personal best prior to this run was 26 minutes, but what's more surprising is the fact that similar to Illumina, he doesn't use F3. So let's see what black magic insanity he was able to pull in order to beat Sizzler's time. 
Much like two letter names Overworld, this run utilized Ocean strats and at 4 minutes he entered the nether. Immediately upon entry, Minsky spotted a housing bastion and by hitting a piglin to aggro surrounding piglins, he led them down a route to where the gold blocks were. The trades were good, helped by the fact that a chest gave him all the necessary obsidian and at 6.30, Minsky was in search of a fortress. A short time later, the fortress was located and many blazes spawned enabling him to leave the nether at 8.30. All it took was one eye to point him in the right direction because after a bit of traveling, he stumbled upon an ocean and saw an ocean exposed portal room. At about the same pace as Sizzler's run, Minsky was in the end, and with a quick perch, he pulled off one of the most insane one cycles I've ever seen, killing the dragon in 4 beds without hitboxes enabled. 1101 was the final time, but the story doesn't end there. Due to Minsky's lack of past runs, it wasn't going to be easy to prove that the run was legitimate. Even though no evidence of cheating was found by the moderators, it was unfortunately rejected for this exact reason. Regardless, it's still an absolutely insane run and seen as very likely to be legitimate by most people. For the meantime, Sizzler held the official world record, but how much longer was that going to last for? Well, as it turns out, not very long, but this time it was different. Remember when I talked about sub 10 being a possibility? Well, runs have been getting closer and closer to breaking that once thought to be impossible barrier, but the final minute is so much harder than any previous one. It was truly gonna take something extraordinary which made the events of April 19th all the more insane. That day, Brentilda decided to start up his stream, and by the end of his stream, he had achieved one of the greatest feats in speedrunning history. Anyways, let's take a look at the run. By watching the first 5 seconds, you may notice something. Brentilda loves to pause. At the time, these pauses weren't counted toward the final time because Minecraft is timed using in-game time to combat hardware differences. Pausing like this wasn't against the rules, but this very run prompted the mods to make rules for regulating it. Anyways, he spawned near a village next to a lava pool and after getting basic tools and building a portal, he was in the nether at just under 3 minutes. A few seconds after entry, he knew that this was a world record seed based on 3 things. First was the housing bastion which he had a clear view of. Second was the nether fortress right behind him, and lastly was the fossil. Whoa whoa whoa, fossils? How could that possibly be useful? Well, allow me to explain. About a month prior to this run, strategy developer Matthew Bullen discovered that fossils in the 0x0z chunk give a general idea of where the stronghold is located. The x value on the starting block of the fossil, numbered 0 through 15, correlates to three sets of coordinates because there are three strongholds in the first ring. This is known as divine travel, and I'm going to throw a table up on screen, and for better visual, I plotted the points in Desmos. Anyways, his seed had a fossil in the 0 0 chunk and the x value of the starting block was 8, so keep that in mind. The first thing he did was go to the bastion and since he didn't have an iron pickaxe, the chest needed to have at least 3 iron ingots. Fortunately, the first one he opened had 6 and he utilized a top down route in order to trade the gold blocks. His trades were extremely good, and with enough pearls, string obsidian, and fire resistance to feed a family, he was off to the fortress. His pearl into the lava was probably the only misplay in the entire run because if he had pearled onto one of the center pillars, he wouldn't have had to swim. Regardless, at 540, he was in the fortress and got an absolute mob of blaze spawns. At 7 minutes, he had all of his rods in, and now it was time to divine travel. Since he didn't have the table of cords immediately at his disposal, he had to look them up, taking about a 25 second pause to do so. Once he had them, he went to the coordinates, and I'm just gonna let the following footage speak for itself. You fucking calculated as well. What? Oh. Dude, I can't, I can't pause. <laughs> I can't pause. He went into the stronghold right next to the portal room. At around 8.20, he was in the end, and under a minute later, the dragon purged. Dude. 
What? <laughs> Dude. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Dude. Brintilda had just done the unthinkable. 9 minutes and 36 seconds was his final time. With all the talk in the community of whether sub 10 was going to be obtained, Brintilda just went out and did it. Not only was he the first person to ever achieve a sub 10 minute run, but he completely skipped the 11 minute barrier. So just how insane is this record? Well, it's been over 6 months since it happened and not only has nobody gotten another sub 10, but only one person has ever gotten within a minute of this time. That's not for a lack of trying either, because since this run happened, runners have been resetting more seeds than ever. You see, people knew that it was going to take a lot to break this record, so different methods of faster resetting have been innovated upon. Firstly is the reset macro. Instead of having to manually create worlds, just press one key and a macro automatically does it for you. Second is multi-instancing. With a good enough CPU, players can run multiple Minecrafts at once and use a macro to automatically switch between them and create new worlds. Lastly, there is the wall, aka multi-instance on crack. I'm just gonna play a few seconds of this clip and let it speak for itself. Even with all these new methods of resetting, Brentilda's run still reigns supreme for the meantime, but that might not be for too much longer. Allow me to elaborate. Brentilda exited the nether at 8.06 in his run, but players have blind traveled at much faster paces. The current fastest one is from Johnny135 at 5.33, but this run ended with the runner not having enough eyes of ender to fill in the end portal. More notably, Illumina, who was able to leave the nether at 5.59, had a very good blind travel travel distance and was able to enter the end at 744, much faster than Brentilda. Unfortunately, he got a very bad perch, but regardless, this is still the closest that anyone has ever come to breaking the record. In order to get a comparable time to Brentilda's, the post nether realistically has to have one of two things, an ocean exposed stronghold not too far away, or a blind travel directly into the stronghold. The first one is definitely more realistic, but people have blind traveled into the stronghold before. In fact, on April 21st, runner Hamazon blind traveled directly into the portal room. On top of that, something called calculated travel has grown a lot in popularity recently. By getting 20 obsidian from a bastion, runners can build two separate nether portals and by gauging the distance to the stronghold from the first one, a player can accurately calculate where to build a second portal in order to get near the stronghold. Just recently on October October 17th, Feinberg got a run where he used calculated travel and was able to enter the stronghold at 820. Even though the circumstances have to be insanely good, the world record is far from impossible and probably a lot closer to being achieved than what you would expect. When Corbano's record happened, people genuinely thought that it was near perfection, but look where 1.16 random C glitches is at now. With persistence and a dedicated group of people, the possibilities are limitless. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this documentary, and have a great day.